I was about to do an MBA, but then I found your program and I went, ah, that's the thing I was looking for. Professional accountants, CPAs, chartered accountants come away going, wow, I've never thought about accounting like that. Isaac Newton, of course, Stephen Hawking, Charles Darwin. Darwin as well, I didn't know. Yeah, okay. yeah, Tom Hiddleston, uh, uh, Eddie Redmayne. If I'm gonna study for a master's program in accounting at Cambridge, what's gonna be the investment that I'm gonna be putting in? Because this is an investment, right? Yeah, 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 so uh, tuition's about. Would you like to take a peek inside a master's program at Cambridge University? Well, I flew all the way to London took a train to Cambridge so I can have a chat with the person who is running the accounting program. We're going to learn about the curriculum, how much is a tuition fee, and the top two reasons why people join a program like this. Cambridge is a charming town that's about one hour away by express train from London. The university itself was founded in 1209, which is, yes, you heard me correctly, is almost a thousand years old. The Masters in Accounting program here at Cambridge University is a part-time program and it's two years in length. So if you're ready, let's go ahead and have a chat with the program director to learn more about it. A lot of you have been thinking about joining a master's program in accounting. There are many schools to choose from. The one that I have been familiar with over the last couple of years is Cambridge University program. Uh, and I've been lucky enough to have uh, met uh, the people who run the program. Uh, Dr. Mike Willis is the director of the executive master's program in accounting here at Cambridge University Judge School of Business, I think it's called. So thank you, Mike, for joining me. Thank you, Bill. We'll be talking about the program today and the things that you would want to hear. So there are a few things that I wrote down that my viewers would be interested in hearing. You know, things like the average years of experience that you'd see from whoever joined the program. How many years have they worked before they joined the master's program? Top two reasons why someone joins a master's program in accounting. The reasons that you hear from students, but also top two reasons why they chose Cambridge as opposed to any other local university where they live. Because I understand the students here are, you know, international. They come from all over the world. We'll talk about the top two courses. So the curriculum, uh, we'll leave a link down below for the curriculum. But we'll talk about the top two courses that are engaging. Like what, what are the students enjoying, you know, in the classroom and learning. And you teaching in the program, you probably see the engagement. You can, you can tell, like, which course is much more engaging. We'll talk about the top two hidden perks. There are things that are listed on the website for Cambridge program. So we'll leave a link for the details down below, but there are things that might not be listed in there in the program curriculum and, and other things that we want to talk about. And then we'll talk about the tuition. This is the one thing that you want to know because this is an investment that you are making in the future. So we'll talk about how much is that. So let's talk about the average years of experience. So like I've, I've attended a course yesterday and, and thank you for inviting me. The course was on bias in AI. It was very engaging. I've met many of the students. They come from all walks of life. So what is the average years of experience that you see normally? Normally our students have so full-time work experience post-undergrad, but we have some students on either side of that, of course. So we have students with, you know, with maybe four or five years, and we have students with 15, 20, even more years of work experience. So we have a range, which I think works really nicely in the classroom. Um, because, you know, the, the more experienced voices can speak from the many things that they've done, yeah. and the, the less experienced voices can bring their perspective and their fresh eyes on these situations that we're talking about. And together, that's a really nice, I think, complementary yeah. structure. But they also come from a really diverse professional set of backgrounds. Okay, so we have some students from more traditional accounting backgrounds like audit or financial reporting or tax. We also have students from legal backgrounds, entrepreneurs, people from NGOs, nonprofits. And that's a really, a really nice part of the program because in discussions like you saw yesterday in class, and the program is very interactive, we have lots of debate and discussion. When we have diversity of perspectives, the discussion is much richer. Yeah, 100%. So uh, what about the reasons for joining a master's program? So, and this is not rehearsed. So this, these questions I'm asking Mike here on the spot. Uh, top two reasons you hear from students. And I know this, the reasons could be a big number of reasons, right? Sure. There's probably there's sure. 10, 20 different reasons you would want to join a master's program. What is the common thing you hear? Common thing I hear is, is one, the uniqueness of this 
executive master's program in accounting. Because when most people think of I'm going to do a master's in accounting, they're usually thinking a pre-qualification degree, like a pre-CPA, like this degree is going to prepare me for my chartered accountant or, or, or CPA exam. But our program is quite different. It's designed to complement that type of training, the technical training that accountants have, and prepare them for all of the challenges in the world that the accounting profession is dealing with, like change leadership, sustainability, data analytics and AI, human systems, all of this stuff. So the first thing is the uniqueness of the program. And I would say that the second thing I hear is I, a lot of students say, I was looking around at master's programs. I had a sense that I wanted to do a master's degree in a business related field, and I couldn't find something that was what I was looking for. And I was about to go do an MBA, which is a great degree. I have an MBA. I was about to do an MBA, but then I found your program and I went, ah, that's the thing I was looking for. Nice, okay. Just a quick message here, guys. If you're getting value out of this video, go ahead and do me a favor and hit that like button down below, which will pay me for my trip going all the way to Cambridge to learn about the program. And also, if you like my teaching style, go ahead and check out my Controller Academy and also my interviewing course. I'm gonna link to both down below. So, because a lot of folks would expect that this program is, since it's a master's in accounting, what I'll be learning is more of what I, so the, or the advanced level of what I've done in the undergrad. So for example, if the undergrad, I've done, you know, cost accounting, you know, for example, statement of cash flow, uh, things like that, maybe in a master's program, what I'll be learning is just maybe special case studies mm. of these that are just more advanced. So more of the financial statement, debit, credit, the meat of accounting type things. But what I'm noticing from the curriculum that these advanced accounting topics make up a small portion of the program, actually. I would even venture to estimate it to be around 10 to 20 percent at, at best, while the majority then of the time of the curriculum is spent on, on what, how would you characterize that? Yeah, I'm glad you picked up on that because that's exactly true. So it's not the case that we're just going to do sort of super, super complex statements of cash flows or, or really detailed technical niche situations. Uh, in accounting, those are important, but but that isn't the focus of the program. Let me give you an example. So, and, and this is maybe pre-answering one of your questions about the favorite sort of the favorite modules in the program. So we have a module called Global Financial Reporting. Okay, and that's sort of the the the, the bread and butter financial accounting module in the program. But our approach to teaching that module is to cover some of the most ambiguous areas in financial reporting but from the perspective of why are the standards written like they are? How did we get to a place where this standard looks like it is today? So you learn not just the what of the standards, but the why of the standards. And that's a deeper level of learning. And the interesting thing about this module is professional accountants, CPAs, chartered accountants, come away going, wow, I've never thought about accounting like that. And then people who might not have such a strong accounting background, and we have those in the, in, the, in the program, come away from that module going, wow, I learned a lot about accounting. And that's really interesting. Yeah. So okay. it's a module that is a, is a perennial favorite to the, to, to right. the whole demographic. Good. So I'm glad you mentioned that. So how, what's a good example? Can you give us an example of a standard that you discussed in class where we talked about why the standard was set the way it was set. Just an example of that so people can Yeah, sure, exactly. In fact, the, the module, Global Financial Reporting, this year is co-taught by Al Jagelinzer, who's a professor here at the Business School, was a former academic fellow at the International Accounting Standards Board, and Kumar Dasgupta, who was a former technical director at the IASB and also a technical accounting partner. And he was the lead on the development, technical lead on the development of IFRS 9. So you're not only speculating on why the rule was set the way it was set, you actually have the people who set the, the rule. The people who wrote the rule, yes, okay. exactly, nice. who know how every word in the standard got to where it is to explain. And that's a truly unique opportunity. Okay, that's awesome. So you started to talk about my next point, which is the top two or the top most engaging courses. Um, and you guys can check out the curriculum. I'll leave a link though down below. What are the courses that you find the most engagement or the students talk most about like, hey, yeah. I've, I've studied for two years because the program is a part-time program. 
We should have mentioned that up front. It's a two, two year part time program for professionals. So you could be, and I know so much about the program because I'm contemplating taking the program myself in 2025. So you can take it next to your job, you're working full time and you're doing the program and you come to Cambridge once a quarter, I believe, right? Yes, right. Mm -hmm. Once a quarter for one full week of, you know, engaging on site, sitting with the professors and other students and engaging in dialogue and debate. Um, so Mike, the top two courses, we talked about the global financial reporting. Was there another one that you- Absolutely, I'll give you two more. So uh, another module that is always a favorite is our module on predictive analytics. Okay, so I think, you know, people kind of have a general idea of what, what we mean by artificial intelligence and what we mean by machine learning and maybe some broad outlines of what those algorithms do. But in our predictive analytics module, students actually write some code they work with real data sets to learn how these predictions are made. And that's a, another level of detail that informs our students on how to be better leaders of analytics processes, right? Because we're not trying to turn them into programmers. We're not just trying to turn them into data, data scientists or statisticians. But someday, they're going to be a CFO. They're going to have some decisions to make big decisions, they're going to be look to data and algorithms to help support those decisions. And if they know what the algorithm's strengths and weaknesses are because they wrote some code to do it, they're going to have a much better understanding and make better decisions. And, and, and students always come away going, wow. Yeah. yeah. In fact, I uh, yesterday and during dinner, I've spoke to a student who said that during the master's program here, he's taught himself Python. Um, it was, I don't think it's required for the program to, to know how to code in Python. A, a little bit of Python, not, little not too much, but yeah. just, yeah. yeah. It doesn't take too much to get up to speed and run the algorithms. Yeah, yeah, so that's really cool. And, and it, it makes a lot of sense because as a CFO, like you mentioned, if you're working with other folks in your team who are modeling stuff, if you understand how the, the meal is cooked, if you exactly. say that, you could, you could you know, have a, a more uh, intelligent approach to it. Um, and I should say, we, we don't assume any programming background prior to the program, we okay. provide onboarding on ramp to, to learn how to write code and support the students like that. And again, it's not a ton of code they have to write. Nice. So you mentioned predictive analytics and yeah. there was one more. Uh, let me give you another one, which is kind of the complete opposite. It's interpersonal dynamics. Okay. And, and this is where we get into the human side of accounting, because I always tell students, if you look at any number on a set of financial statements, that number was a product of some human decisions some negotiation, because there's estimation in every number, in every footnote. Ultimately, everything we do in accounting and finance is a fundamentally human operation. And so to be an effective leader requires an understanding of human systems, of emotional intelligence, of understanding how you're perceived, of how to build trust, how to understand power in communications relationships. All of these are topics that we cover in our interpersonal dynamics class. So yeah, that's that's kind oh, cool. of two yeah. two two opposite maybe it's opposite parts. Opposite, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. But those um, are always favorites. And that speaks to the I guess the spectrum of of skills that you try to cover in the program. Exactly. Right. Uh, the technical aspect, whether it's when it comes to rules, accounting rules, and then technical aspects with numbers, which is the predictive analytics is a good example. But then also the interpersonal skills, which is really great. Let's talk about something more fun. So when I, we were discussing yesterday during dinner. Uh, you'd mentioned that when you join Cambridge master's program, you get to join a college. I didn't understand what that meant, but uh, could you explain to us like what, so this is the, the perks of being in the program. This is one of them that it's not really talked about in, in, in the website. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So Cambridge University is made up or, or consists of 31 different colleges. And every student at University of Cambridge is admitted to one of the colleges, whether they're an undergrad or graduate student, PhD, whatever. For the undergrad students, they, they live in the college and they go to lectures with other students from other colleges around the university, big lectures, but then they have sort of small group sessions in the college with the faculty where they have these you know, kind of intimate discussions. They also eat in the college and they do extracurriculars there. So it's a community within the larger community. So our students are also admitted to one of the colleges and they're members of the colleges as well. Of course, it's different for a part-time student. They're not living in the college and, and eating there, but they still get to take advantage of going to formal dinners and the dining halls, which are kind of Hogwarts-y looking kind of beautiful uh, environments. 
the colleges also have students and faculty from all over the university. So if you go to a dinner at a college, at your college, you could be sitting next to someone who's doing a PhD in theology, and there's a, a prize-winning physicist sitting next to you and a, and a French scholar across from you. And that's quite a unique opportunity that you really can't get many other places in the world. It's an opportunity to connect with the broader university and with, with people outside your discipline, attend events, extracurriculars. It's just up to the student to take advantage of those, those opportunities. Yeah, 100%. I think it's a misconception thinking of joining a graduate program of accounting or finance that you'd be just learning accounting and finance. But this provides an opportunity for this cross-pollination with other disciplines and kind of understanding, uh, broadening your horizons and just like really think beyond what, what you do. And, and it's really great. Uh, the other thing is of joining Cambridge, for me at least, and it's a shallow reason for me to think about maybe, <laughs> is you know, having on my resume or LinkedIn profile that I've graduated a program at, from Cambridge. Who are the famous, I think when I was walking yesterday, someone mentioned that you know, there in that building is a tree where Sir Isaac Newton you know, had the apple fall, fell on from. Who, who are the famous folks who graduated from Cambridge? Wow, there's, uh, there's 800 years of famous folks who have graduated from Cambridge. Isaac Newton, of course, Stephen Hawking, Charles Darwin. Darwin as well, I didn't know. Yeah, okay. yeah, Tom Hiddleston. Uh, uh, Eddie Redmayne. <laughs> so there's 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 no shortage of you know the list of Nobel Prize winners, the list of of you know other prize winners that come come from Cambridge. This is a unique place with a long history of of people who have literally changed the world, and you know just the opportunity to walk where they walked, you know, and sit where they sat. I think is inspiring. Yeah, yeah, it, it's really great. Let's talk about the tuition. A lot of folks who are watching this want to know if I'm going to study for a master's program in accounting at Cambridge, what's going to be the investment that I'm going to be putting in? Because this is an investment, right? Do you, you'd expect that you'd be spending this on the program um, for a return uh, that is, you know, could be somewhat tangible in, in the sense that you would progress your career and earn more money in the near to long term. Um, but also there is the intangible of all of what we talked about, the cross-pollination of like really understanding how other disciplines work and, um, and all of that. So the tuition, could you tell us when uh, we're mindful that this is in 2024, so whatever numbers we're talking about today could change somewhat in the future. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, tuition is about 49,000 uh, pounds right now. And then, you know, there's cost to travel to Cambridge because it is a part-time program. Okay. And you're right, that, that's, that's a lot. It's a big investment. And we've designed the program to support particular career paths and to support a return on that investment over a career. That's the first thing to be aware of is it does sound like a lot, but if you've got 20, 30 years of your career left, you know, that's a benefit that's going to accrue for the rest yeah. of your, and, and the benefit is, you know, certainly what you learn in the classroom. And one of the advantages to a part-time model is we cover something during the week, you go back to work on Monday and you can use it. So you have this rapid cycle of applying what you learn. And the, the program is relevant, it's industry relevant. And so we see this, we see this all the time. Students report back, I used this thing in my job, I built this, I built this visualization, what we did last week. And it, so there's, the, there's that part of it, there's the, 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 the network part of it, there's, there's the relationship part of it. And one of the unique things about this program is the global footprint. I, you probably met students from all over the world yesterday and last night, and every cohort is like that. And so building the global network and connecting with the network in the Executive Mac program and in the Judge Business School and in the University of Cambridge. So, you know, I think that those are, those are really long-term benefits. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. The students that I've met yesterday, also for context to the viewers, we were in a classroom of about 20 or so, maybe 15 to 20 students. And they were from Hong Kong, United Arab Emirates, Luxembourg, uh, US, UK, other places. So it's re it really is an international program in the sense that you're adding to your experiences, the experiences also of those who worked in, 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 in APAC, in EMEA, and other, in other places of the world so that you're really getting 
you know, a, a lot of the experiences that you haven't gone through yourself, but you're hearing about from other students. Um, so the tuition is 49,000 um, pounds. Um, and um, you definitely, when you think about that, you think about the other costs that you'll have to you know, spend because you'll be coming to Cambridge, UK once every three months for two years. So uh, this is a one week trip, about eight of them. Uh, that you'll be spending. So uh, you can add to the tuition, uh, you know, another threshold of maybe 20,000 or so um, US dollars or pounds in terms of, you know, travel and accommodation and things like that. So it's an investment. And what I can say too is from speaking to students who are in their second years in the, in the second year of the program yesterday, I've heard stories and, and these are not necessarily like, like rich people. Like uh, one of them was a, an analyst, a treasury analyst from Texas. Um, so he talked about how he came up with the finances of joining the program because it's a number to think about, right? If you're going to do this, you're going to think of the financing. Are you going to set aside some money? Are you going to take a loan? And um, what kind of return you're thinking, you're expecting to get from that, you know, over the near term, let's say five to 10 years by joining the program. So this is really great, Mike. I appreciate the invite and, and, and the time that I spent here and you know the time that you have set aside to speak with us today. Thanks, Bill. It was great chatting with you. Awesome.